G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to have a look at the king of top tier jets, the F-14A Early. This particular plane is the one plane in War Thunder that best combines the three pillars of top tier. Performance, avionics, and weaponry. These three factors are best sort of utilized by the F-14. And you might think, well, surely it's not that great. Surely there are some caveats. And of course there are, but less so with the F-14 than with other jets. The F-14 is the only plane in the game at the moment to have semi-active radar homing missiles. It has a couple of features that are somewhat limited in the game, such as track while scan. A lot of planes don't have this functionality and the planes that do don't have semi-active radar homing missiles. This plane has some of the best performance both at sea level and at altitude, as well as at speed and turning at low speed. These planes are, this particular plane is, is really versatile. And before we get into this particular match, I'd just like to say thank you for the continuous support throughout the channel. If you guys wish to support the channel financially and pick up some War Thunder gear, head to the link in the description below and use my discount code for a 3% discount and you get my little decal. You can show that off on your plane, um, which is something I should really be doing a little bit more often, but uh, I'm not one for decals. So if you are, or if you'd just like to collect, or if you'd just like to support, then head down to the link in the description below. So this particular match was taken a few days after the Danger Zone patch released, and I'm carrying here two AIM-54 Phoenixes. I have track while scan on, and uh, I'm basically just looking for a target. Now I know there are a bunch of enemies that like to trawl across the screen sort of right in front of me and then at that point they'll start to sort of head towards the swarm of uh, their enemies. I've managed to lock one at 16 kilometers and we're going to send that AIM-54 Phoenix away and now I'm going to look for a second one and it looks like this bad boy here is going to cop a Sparrow. Now the Sparrow is in my opinion the go-to weapon for this plane. It's one of those weapons that probably needs to be uh, utilized more often on the thing on the uh, f-14 the phoenixes are good but i consider them to be a bit more of a meme and that's why i've only included one match here with them because the phoenix is not a, a really powerful weapon it's more uh, i would say to get your opponent into a compromising situation to get them to try and run away or to get them to try and lose speed dodging it and this is the the key here of the f-14 it's not a plane that wears its opponents down by dogfighting. It's not an opponent that sneaks in and gets a quick kill. It's a plane that thoroughly wears down its opponent and gets them to very, very painfully and very slowly surrender. This is the ace up the F-14 sleeve, the Maverick up the F-14 sleeve. It's a plane that just simply wears its opponents down. You are facing the F-14 in a head-on, Here's, here's an AIM-7. You're facing them at a distance of 20 plus kilometers. Here's an AIM-54 Phoenix. You're turning around. Here's an AIM-9H. You're firing, you're firing a, an R-60M at me. Here are some flares. You're trying to uh, run away in a dogfight. Here are the swing wings and the Vulcan cannon. This is the simple fact of the F-14. It has so many layers of standoff AIM-7 everything you name it it is able to just deal with its opponents way more effectively than any other plane on the battlefield in war thunder at the moment making it the undisputed king you can see here i'm just sitting behind the vigan and this vigan can't really do anything he's sort of up shit creek without a paddle and the vigan being a delta wing has some excellent aoa but in this case here you need to be on the upper foot otherwise you are not going to get anywhere at the really, really low speeds, I find that the F-14 is a decent dogfighter. The uh, automatic swing wings tend to do fine, and I tend to leave it that way. Um, but for the most part, the ability for this plane to just change its position in terms of a, a straight-up dogfight is second to none. Here we are here with a MiG-23, and of course he's coming head-on. I have the uh, AIM-9H ready, but of course... He gets taken out by another F-14, and this is a pretty clean sweep by the team. You can see an easy four kills, and it doesn't even feel like I've cracked a sweat. So we're going to go on to the next game in just a second. 
Now, these are all matches that I've taken fairly recently, perhaps in the last uh, two weeks. These particular matches here are against things like Mirage 2000s and all the like of the new patch, Harrier GR7. And, um, you know, I've made my video here on the Mirage already. I quite like it, actually. And I decently like the Harrier at the moment, but we'll get to a video of that in a little bit. We're taking out here a Mirage 2000, and of course we're equipped with four AIM-7 Fs. I personally believe the 7 Fs are the best. These particular missiles have a really long range. They are semi-active radar guided, which means that they are, um, y you need to constantly keep your radar lock on the target. And these particular missiles have a 30 odd G overload, giving them plenty of room to maneuver into an enemy. I find that after a little while, they are extremely maneuverable and extremely capable. So once you do get that lock, if your opponent isn't notching, which seems to happen fairly infrequently nowadays, uh, I think it's because everyone just has a sort of sensory overload, if you will, uh, like a, a, an almost inability to cope with the sheer volume of information, which is kind of why the F-14 comes with two pilots, or, or two crew members, rather. You have one person to figure out all the flying and the dogfighting, and you have another person to operate the weapons and the radar, because you simply need that much human brain power to compute what is going on in these situations, and I think that is a prime argument for a lower number of people in a single match. You'll probably be able to get more matches quicker, but more importantly, each player will actually get a fighting chance to do something, rather than just be food for a mass or a horde of enemies. Now, moving on here, we have a horde of us heading towards this poor F-104. Now, the F-104, I would consider to be one of the least competitive jets in the game uh, overall from its very first model to its very last, and this F-104 is going to know exactly what's happening to him. He's pretty much just being chased by enemies, and I think I'm going to drop in on him because I haven't really got much else to engage in this match. There are a few enemies around here, but I would sort of be a lone wolf, and being that lone wolf in a situation like this is quite disadvantageous. I'm going to send an AIM-9H his way, and the 9H is actually quite a good missile. I would, I would consider it to be a mix between the 9J and the 9 uh, G. It's quite good. So, I've got here my little Harrier friend. He might fire a 9L at me, and uh, it looks like the AIM-7 has done the job. He's too distracted to look at me, and uh, before I can even think about it, there is another plane here with a missile heading straight towards him. SU-25, little frog foot. Shouldn't be in this matchmaker. Someone's obviously troll squatting, but that's beside the point. We have another kill here. This is the way top tier jets can sometimes devolve, where you are in a situation where you just don't have enough time to even think. And the F-14 is actually really good at capitalizing on this, just because it has so many missiles and it has such a variation of missiles. You can use long range, medium range, short range, guns, maneuvering dogfights, flares, chaff, whatever you want and this plane can throw it at its opponents. This, this is the beauty of the F-14, and this is why the F-14 is easily, in my opinion, the top dog of top tier, by quite a long shot, actually. The Mirage 2000 only has four missiles, and you might say only, as someone who uh, has previously been a France sufferer, um, and yeah, th that would be correct. Four missiles is considered not a lot. Uh, most planes that are considered to be highly competitive have around six. The MiG-23 MLD, the, uh, uh, I've forgotten the name now, the other stuff, the, the Vigan. These types of planes have larger amounts of missiles because their ability to just simply deal with larger volumes of opponents by throwing more shit at the wall and hoping it sticks is actually a valid solution. It's a valid tactic and it works because more missiles equals more confusion. And that's the simple fact of the matter. The way you can just throw more stuff at an opponent and let it stick is an advantage to the F-14, and I think overall a disadvantage to War Thunder, because it means that the skill gap is lowered. You could just sort of make it up with more missiles. Now, moving on to the next match here, I kind of want to show you roughly what I do. Um, and I tend to sit on the periphery with the F-14. I try and pick a one versus one as much as I can because I know that I can more than likely win a one versus one or a two versus two. I definitely can't win fights where I'm outnumbered. 
and I definitely cannot win fights where I am out-missiled. And, uh, you know, those fights will happen few and far between, but they do happen. Now, if I can get distracted opponents, like this F-14 here, and the F-5C that I just shot down, that is an easy kill, a very easy kill. Go for your opponents that are attacking friendlies, and it'll do one of two things, or it'll do two, two of two things. It'll, first of all, get you a free kill, and second of all, it'll save your teammate, which you can use later on in a match. You don't underestimate the value of your teammates, even if it is as cannon fodder only, because whilst they're cannon fodder, they will still be able to do things for you. They will still be able to take out opponents. They will still be able to distract your opponents. And that is the key there with these particular uh, situations. Be, be a team player. This is a team game after all. You know, it's kind of, kind of in the description and you should probably do it. I would, I would recommend it's, it's good community building. It makes, makes everyone a little happier. It makes the world go around. Speaking of going around, we're going to go up and over here with this F8. And there's a Milan sitting right behind him. And uh, I think the Milan is going to actually get the kill here if I don't stuff it up royally. And what I've done here is I am stuffing it up royally. I do barely escape that absolute pounding from the F8 Crusader. And one of the things that I'd like to bring up here is that it is not a good situation, or not, not a good thing to do to dogfight planes that are smaller than you. F5s, F8s, uh, sort of all of those sort of single engine, smaller or, or even twin engine planes that are physically smaller and have like straighter wings overall, I would not dogfight it. This thing is a heavy motherfucker and honestly, if you can avoid dogfighting things that are like below your weight class, you'll have a very easy time. In fact, I would probably only dogfight if the situation really depended on it, and I would dogfight at high speed, because this plane is very quick on the deck, and if you take any damage, you can see the effect that it has on my ability to generate lift. Even though it's not the uh, the wings, the ability to gain speed, that, that damage to the airframe, has resulted in a 150 km per hour top speed loss, which actually puts me slower than the F4E. It's kind of crazy to think about. The more damage you take, the poorer you fly, and the poorer you'll end up being in this particular sort of situation, the more, the more of a disadvantage you'll be at. Now, the F4E, originally I was having some issues tracking it because it was so slow, but now that he's picked up a bit of speed, I managed to put one in him and get kill number four. This particular match, I just wanted to show you that sort of moving in from the periphery, sticking with your team, picking 1v1s or picking teammates that you are engaged, that, that are already engaged. And that is very important for your team building and it is very important for your victories. Never, never underestimate your teams. This next match here, I just want to show again sort of the way that I'm going around the map and avoiding uh, enemies here. We have an F4EJ tearing up the middle and an FGR2 who is now pursuing what looks like me. Now, I'm going to send a missile his way and pull up at the last second. It's probably not going to strike because the FGR2 was just too close to the ground. But have a look at this. I'm able to just backflip so easily onto the opponents, just doing that roll. And of course, he flares, which means that he puts me in a bit of a disadvantage here. He's I haven't got the kill, and I am now having a couple of enemies pursue me. But the performance of this plane is excellent. And I'm able to just sort of skirt around the battlefield and head towards my teammates a little bit to avoid the enemy missiles. And just as I use, or as, as my team uh, is taken advantage of by me, uh, so I can do the same for my, my teammates. I've essentially baited half the enemy team into a situation where they're going to be engaged by my team. And this is advantageous for me because it gets enemies off my six and it also gets enemies into the kill feed. So, the FGR2 there goes down. This Mirage here is looking very spicy. I don't know why I engaged that. And again, I put myself in a stupid situation by engaging in a last second head-on situation. This particular Mirage 2000 is gonna eat an AIM-7. And this Mirage here, I shouldn't have gone for. I should have gone for this Mirage here that is coming up, but it's okay. I'm just going to disengage 
and go around, see if I can help this MiG-23 MLD and uh, try and get a uh, nice easy kill here. We're going to do a switcheroo. There we go. There's the last second aim 7 and it looks like it's going to strike home. A beautiful switch. That F4EJ that was behind me was taken out by the MLA and I took out the F1C that was chasing the MLA. It's perfect. This is exactly how teamwork should be. And the F14 is able to take perfect advantage of these situations. It is the perfect jet for top tier. It is quite simply the perfect machine at this battle rating. And this particular plane is, in my opinion, winner winner chicken dinner. So, what have we got left? The uh, Mirage in the distance there. And of course, because I'm so damaged, I am struggling to gain a bit more lift. I have two 9Hs left, which means that I can't engage from a frontal aspect. Considering that this particular Mirage might have the uh, the R530s, the R530 Super Ds or something like that, um, basically it's semi-active radar homing missiles, you can't assume that these guys have clean wings anymore. Simply put, it is bad for your health. So, Mirage here is running away, and because I've sustained that damage, I am no longer able to keep up with the Mirage. I should probably be able to outrun him, so I might just yeet out a missile, see what he does, and see if he's got any countermeasures left. It looks like he does, and he is flying away. But this puts the MLA sitting behind me in a situation where now he can engage. And if he hasn't sustained any damage, he probably should be able to keep up with the Mirage, because he is faster at pretty much every altitude. Now, the Mirage is very much in a situation where he needs to be panicking. Uh, he pops some flares. Again, doing this little maneuver here to get out of the way, turning away, and he is now within 1.2 or 2 kilometers of the, uh, the missiles. He's getting very close to uh, certain death. And whilst the MLA has the ability here to release another missile, it looks like it is an F1 CT, which is an absolute shit bust. So I have a couple of rounds of ammunition left. It's time to spray away and hopefully land a hit. He's pretty much gone. The um, F1 C is is a terrible plane. Um, I would call it anemic. Uh, others would call it some uh, R words or some other colorful language, but it is a very, very bad plane. Um, and just to be stuck in that situation is, uh, is, is fantastic. So moving on to the final match that I'd like to show. This is, uh, I would say, piece de resistance of the F-14. Again, we're on a snow map and for some reason, snow maps just tend to work better with me we are going along the periphery. Again, you don't want to take the main route because you're just going to get targeted. And uh, if you've got other F-14s on the team, or on the enemy team that is, you're just going to get phoenixed or locked up very early. You tend to have those monkeys that sort of fire all their phoenixes early on in the match. And the best way to avoid them is to fly in a sideways pattern at them, or at 90 degrees. In other words, you want to notch them. But notching them isn't going to save you if you have sort of 15 of them uh, and they're all barreling towards you. The one thing that you need to do is stay out of their way. And by staying out of their way, I mean sort of pulling up the periphery of the map and staying low in altitude. Being at altitude in the F-14, I would consider to be a death sentence, simply because this thing is a bit of a missile bus. It's, it is a missile bus, but it's able to do dogfighting things, but you want to use it as a missile bus. You don't want to have to start dropping speed early on in the match because at the beginning stages of the match staying fast is exactly what you want and just like you would have it the F-14 fits this meta perfectly you're running around here and avoiding energy signatures or avoiding radar signatures and just just trying to hug the terrain just trying to stay in an advantageous position now I have spotted an opponent I just want to range him there and he is 10 kilometers out which means that he should start to appear very soon there he is Mirage 2000, I assume, and I'm just going to send a missile his way. It looks like he's going to come around towards me, and he's just cleared that hill. It's the uh, F1C Classic. Such a shit plane, honestly. I, I don't understand why it is even in the game. It is just so damn bad. So, now that I have the periphery sorted out, we're going to go into the thick of it. We're going to go and have a look at some teammates that we can save. We're going to start gaining a little bit of altitude here because what will tend to happen is that the uh, enemies will converge on the ground level. They'll tend to start at a high altitude and then they'll work their way down, which is what you do in props. But in jets, I would recommend that you kind of do this type of pattern here where you start low, build up high, and then come back down on your opponents. 
This is looking really bad, really, really bad, really quickly. So I'm gonna go and lock up a Harrier here. It looks like he's using flares. So I might just pick a different target. There we go, we have some sort of a lock. I'm gonna get another missile out. That's two missiles. The FGR2 is looking extra juicy today. So I'm gonna send one there. And it looks like the Harrier is coming in, maybe guns, 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 and I get it with uh, nothing. Uh, I, I get a little critical hit, I think. Um, but that might be enough for him to go down. And now that I'm done, I am booking the hell out of here. This is not going to end well if I cannot put some numbers on the board. So we're going to go up and around and hopefully engage one of the Harriers here. In this case, it looks like the Harriers are interested in me and they may be firing aim 9 ls So what I do is the absolute Chad move here. I turn my engine off. And <laughs> you might think, what the hell are you doing by turning your engine off? But the AIM-9Ls are so powerful that these heat-seeking bad boys are going to latch onto anything. And being this far away from the Harrier GR7 means I am practically immune from gunfire. The uh, 25mm cannons are good up to a certain range, but they don't have any, uh, any traces, so it's very hard to aim. And just as the afterburners come on, I decide to go into a turning engagement here with the Harrier GR1. You can see that he just can't get guns on me. And now that I'm at this low speed with my wings out, I can go for the reversal. Now I don't get this particular one, but now you can see he's very much engaged by the both of us. And this allows me to sneak up behind and let him have it. Here we go with the final absolute beauty of a kill. No, absolutely not. Now, it's a Vulcan cannon. It shouldn't be that hard to aim. Yet here I am having massive difficulty so the GR7 is basically fucked here, and it's only a matter of time before he goes down. Uh, I need to turn my attention here to the F4E, which is going to be an absolute breeze of a kill if he keeps heading towards me at that rate. Here he goes, coming in nice and quick, and very easy kill. Turn your engines off against GR7s. Give it, give it enough distance, give it enough space, and have some time to recover. But if you're in a 1v1 versus a GR1, just briefly switch off your engine in the merge and you will have the most hilarious time every single time. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the king. The pure king of 10 point or 11.3. There is simply nothing else that beats this plane and there is nothing else that you need. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much to all the supporters who are continuously supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And with that said, take care, and I'll catch you next time.